6,000 years ago, before the rise of great civilizations like the Mayans or the Incans, a mysterious group of humans lived in the Americas. They hunted, they gathered, they buried their dead, and then they vanished without a trace. For centuries, these people lay hidden beneath the soil. No one knew they had ever existed. But now, in a new discovery, ancient DNA has revealed a forgotten chapter in the human story, a group of people who do not fit anywhere on the known genetic map of the Americas. They are neither ancestors of ancient native North Americans, nor connected to the early inhabitants of South America. So who were they? Some 20,000 years ago, during the last glacial maximum, vast ice sheets covered much of North America, and sea levels were so low that a land bridge known as Beringia connected Siberia to Alaska. This grassy landscape teemed with mammoths, bison, and other megafauna. It was the gateway for the first humans to enter the Americas. These early migrants were the descendants of ancient East Asian and Siberian populations and crossed Beringia around 16,000 years ago, carrying with them the genetic seeds of Native American ancestry. As the ice retreated, these people ventured south. By 13,000 years ago, the Clovis culture, which was known for its distinctive fluted spear points, had spread across North America. But recent discoveries, like 23,000-year-old footprints at White Sands National Park in New Mexico, suggest humans arrived even earlier. But that's another story. The journey southward funneled through the Isthmus of Panama, a narrow land bridge that served as the only route to South America. The Bogota Altiplano, a high plateau at 2,600 meters above sea level in the eastern cordillera of the Colombian Andes, was a key stop along this path. Its fertile soils, wetlands, and abundant wildlife made it an ideal haven for early hunter-gatherers. Here in the shadow of the Andes, humans adapted to a high altitude world forging lives in a land that was both bountiful and challenging. But who were these people, and how did they fit into the broader story of the Americas? For decades, scientists believed a single wave of migration, followed by regional diversification, explained the peopling of South America. The discovery of a unique lineage in the Bogota Altiplano, however, has upended that narrative, revealing a story more complex than we thought we knew. In a landmark study published in Science Advances, a team of international researchers analyzed the genomes of 21 ancient individuals from the Bogota Altiplano, spanning 6,000 to 500 years ago. Their findings were based on DNA extracted from the petrous bones and teeth of these individuals. The DNA results unveiled a previously unknown group of preceramic hunter-gatherers who lived around 6,000 years ago. This group, identified at the Chequa site and labeled Columbia Chequa 6000 BP, represents a basal lineage a distinct genetic branch that diverged early in the peopling of South America, separate from the ancestors of both ancient North Americans and modern South Americans. These hunter-gatherers, unlike other known populations, do not share close genetic ties with the Clovis-associated Anzac One individual from Montana, dated at 12,800 years ago, nor with the California Channel Islands ancestry that spread into the central Andes by 4,200 years ago. Instead, they form an outgroup to most indigenous South Americans, suggesting they were part of an early radiation of humans into the continent, possibly one of the first groups to settle south of the Isthmus of Panama. Their genetic profile, analyzed using advanced techniques like F4 and F3 outgroup statistics, which are tools that compare DNA patterns to see how closely related groups are, shows no specific affinity to any modern or ancient South American population. The Bogota Altiplano, 6,000 years ago, was an open landscape of grassy plains and wetlands framed by the peaks of the Andes. The Chequa hunter-gatherers, the group that DNA just uncovered, made their home here. Living at 2,600 meters above sea level, they faced chilly nights and thinner air which required them to adapt to survive. They likely hunted deer, small mammals, and fish from the Altiplano's rivers while gathering wild plants like starchy tubers and fruits. Without pottery to store or cook food, they might have used woven baskets or animal hides. The DNA analysis also offers a window into their community. Among the seven Checo individuals studied, scientists found four pairs of close relatives, like cousins or siblings, suggesting a tight-knit group. Five were men, all sharing a Y chromosome marker called haplogroup Q1b1a, a common paternal lineage among Native Americans, passed from father to son. Their mitochondrial DNA, passed from mother to child, was more varied, with haplogroup B2D being the most common, followed by A2 and C1. These haplogroups are like genetic labels that trace maternal ancestry. The diversity in their maternal lines hints at a dynamic group, and a technique called runs of homozygosity, ROH, which measures how much identical DNA a person inherited from both parents 
showed low inbreeding, meaning they didn't often marry close relatives. Their small population size, estimated to be three to eight times smaller than later groups, matches archaeological evidence of small hunter-gatherer bands during the Precaramic period, from 11,500 to 4,000 years ago. Their genetic isolation raises big questions. Did they avoid other groups, perhaps because the Andes Mountains kept them apart? Or were they part of a larger network that left no genetic trace? Their tools, likely made of stone and bone, suggest a nomadic lifestyle, moving with the seasons to find food. Without pottery, they lived before the agricultural changes that would later reshape the Altiplano, relying entirely on the land's natural resources. The study then uncovered a major change. By 2,000 years ago, this unique group had disappeared from the Altiplano and was replaced by a new population whose DNA was more similar to people from Central America, linked to a cultural phase called the Herrera Ceramic Complex. This replacement was confirmed using a technique called admixture, which acts like a recipe book, breaking down a person's DNA into ingredients to show which ancestral groups they come from, and QP wave, which checks if groups share a common genetic history. These later populations, from the Herrera period, 2,800 to 1,200 years ago, to the Muisca period, 1,200 to 500 years ago, were genetically similar to each other, suggesting a stable population that lasted until the Spanish arrived in the 16th century. So the question is, what happened to the Chequa people? The study suggests a complete genetic replacement with no signs of their DNA mixing with the new group. This could have been due to climate changes, competition for resources or diseases. The arrival of pottery and farming likely gave the Herrera people an edge, allowing them to outcompete or displace the hunter-gatherers. The Chequa hunter-gatherers challenged the old idea that the Clovis culture was the first and only wave of settlers in the Americas. Their discovery supports a more complex story, with multiple migrations and periods of isolation. Like the ancient Beringians in Alaska or the California Channel Islands groups, the Chequa people show that early South Americans were diverse, with some groups splitting off early and others mixing over time. The Altiplano's role as the gateway to the continent makes it a hotspot for future studies. Scientists are calling for more DNA research across South America to trace the Chequa lineage's fate. Did they leave descendants in places like the Amazon or Central America? Could their genes linger in modern Chibchan-speaking groups? New techniques like single-cell sequencing, which zooms in on individual cells, DNA, and isotopic analysis, which studies chemical traces in bones to reveal diet and movement, could answer these questions. The discovery also raises questions about human survival. How did the Chequa people adapt to the high Andes? What caused their replacement? Climate shifts, like the warming period around 6,000 years ago, might have changed food availability, while pottery and farming likely gave later groups an advantage. Exploring these questions will require teamwork across archaeology, anthropology, and genetics. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video to help us spread their tale. Also, comment your thoughts on these people and any other feedback you might have. See you on the next one.